In this video, we're taking a look at four different great sounding affordable pedals from the brand Sonic Cake. So if that sounds cool, stick around, we're getting right into it. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new here, my name is Eric Marrow. Here on the channel, you're gonna find gear demos, like this one, and instructional videos aimed to help musicians just like you and me. So if that sounds cool, please check out all the videos here on the channel and subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos that I put out every week. So in this video, we're going over four different pedals from the brand Sonic Cake. Now they got in touch and they sent these pedals over and I was honestly pretty surprised at how great they sound and how affordable they are. So in this lineup, we're going over the Cloud Chorus, the Echo Rain, the Sonic Ambience, and the Sonic IR. And I don't think any of these pedals go over $60 US, which is pretty insane, honestly. So I wanna go over the signal chain really quick just to kind of give you some context of how I'm recording this. We're starting with the guitar, which is my Gibson SG standard. We're going into two pedals on the floor, which we're not going in depth in. It is the Skybridge from Elm FX and the Model Fet from Electronic Audio Experiments. And this just gives me kind of my amp sound because we're actually recording direct. So I wanted to get a little bit of drive and compression going into the rest of the pedals. So from the Model Fet, we're going into the Cloud Chorus, Cloud Chorus goes into the Echo Rain, Echo Rain goes into the Sonic Ambience, and then the Sonic Ambience goes into the Sonic IR, and we're using the XLR out of the Sonic IR to record all of the audio that you're hearing on the guitar right now. And that's gonna bring us to the first pedal that I wanna talk about, which is the Sonic IR. Now the Sonic IR is a really simple pedal. It's an IR loader, which means it houses impulse responses, which are like digital versions of a cab and a mic in a room. So we have an 11-way rotary switch and a level. So we have 11 different IRs that we can choose to recall, and we have a level that's, you know, we can fine tune the signal that comes out of the Sonic IR. Now, one thing to note is that I have the quarter inch plugged in right here and it's just going to an amp here in the room so I can hear what's happening. The speaker simulations, the IRs, are actually applied to both the XLR output and the quarter inch output. So if we move to position one on the Sonic IR, that's going to give us an IR that is a Fender Champ, so an eight inch speaker in a really small enclosure, and that's what this sounds like. <laughs> So moving on to number two on the rotary dial here, that gives us a Vox like two by 12. So that's gonna be your AC 30s. And just really quickly, back to back, I want to hit a chord, go back to position one, and then hit a chord, go back to position two, just so you can hear in real time the drastic effect that these different IRs have on your sound. It's pretty crazy. And one thing to note also is that it comes preloaded with 11 stock IRs from Sonic Cake, but you can actually load your own IRs or your favorite like third party IRs by plugging the Sonic IR into your computer. So moving on, position three on the Sonic IR is a Fender style two by 12. So that's gonna be like your deluxe reverb sound. <laughs> So position number four is a Marshall 2x12 cab.
Position number five on the dial is a basement, so that's a Fender 4x10 cab. <laughs> Position six is an orange four by 12. Position seven is the classic Marshall four by 12. Number eight is the PV6505 4x12. <laughs> Position number nine is a Mesa Boogie 4x12. Now moving on, we actually have two bass cabs loaded in, so I've got my Fender Standard Jazz Bass right here. Number 10, position 10 on the Sonic IR, is a Mark Bass 2x10 cab. Position number 11, the last position on the Sonic IR, is the Ampeg 8x10 fridge cab. Okay, so we're back on guitar. I'm going to set this to position number seven because I really like that Marshall cab. And now we're gonna backtrack a little bit and take a look at the Cloud Chorus. Now the Cloud Chorus is a pretty simple pedal. It's a chorus pedal. We have three controls. We have level, speed, and depth. Level is gonna be the blend of the chorus sound mixed in with our clean guitar signal. So with the level all the way down, we're not blending in much chorus signal with our dry signal. <laughs> And as we turn it up, we're going to blend in more chorus signal with our dry signal. So here's at 50%. And then of course, if you turn it up more, you're gonna introduce more chorus signal. So here's at full. You can hear it gets really wobbly if you have it all the way maxed. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to like 75%. And we're gonna go on to the speed control. That is the speed of the chorus. So if we turn it down, of course, we get a slower chorus. And as we turn it up, we get a faster chord. I'm gonna go ahead and set the speed back to about 
And we're moving on to the depth control, which controls how wide of a range that your pitch is being modulated. So if we have it down at minimum, it's not going to modulate as intensely. <laughs> And as I start to increase the depth, we're increasing that kind of like how far our signal strays away from its pitch. So here's at 50%. Now as I go up, we're going to get that more kind of like seasick warbly sound. So here's at max. So that gets really intense with the depth all the way up. So now let's go ahead and move on to the Echo Rain. Now the Echo Rain is an echo pedal, again, similar to the Cloud Chorus. We have three controls. It's a pretty straightforward pedal. We have controls for blend, time, and repeat. Our blend is going to be our mix of dry signal, guitar signal, and wet signal, which is our delay signal. So if we turn it down, we're not gonna get any delay. If we turn it up, we get more delay. And so the Echo Rain is a digital delay pedal, but they've voiced it to sound more like an analog, kind of like a, a darker sound. Moving on, we have the time control. So if we turn it all the way down, we get quicker delays. And then as we turn the time knob up, we're gonna get longer delays, all the way up to 500 milliseconds. I'm gonna go ahead and set the speed back to about 50% and we're gonna go on to the repeat control now. This is the feedback control, how many repeats we're introducing into our signal. So if we turn it down, so we're at minimum on the repeat, it's only gonna be one repeat. As we turn it up, it introduces more repeats. I'm gonna go up to 50%. Pretty standard controls for a delay. If we get up to about 75%, that's when it starts self oscillating. So it can do that kind of like crazy noise making stuff. That was with the repeat at 75%. You can turn it up more and that just means that self-oscillation is going to come on quicker. So here's at max. You can hear that with the repeat knob on max, the self-oscillation comes in a lot sooner than it did at that 75% on the repeat knob. Moving on, we have the Sonic Ambience. Now the Sonic Ambience is kind of a more in-depth pedal than the previous three. The sonic ambience is a reverb on the left here and then a delay on the right. Now each effect, the reverb and the delay, have four different modes and an independent set of controls. So on the reverb side, I'm gonna go ahead and turn all the delay controls off here. We're just gonna focus in on the reverb. On the reverb side, we have a mix control which blends in more or less reverb. So here's with it down at minimum. <laughs> Again, we're not getting any reverb. If we turn it up, we're gonna get more reverb blended in. Yeah. 
Here's at about 60%. Here's up at 75%. You can hear that even at 75%, we're pretty much only getting reverb signal. We don't have much dry signal in the overall effect. Here's at max. So at 100%, we're not getting any dry signal, it's all reverb. Now, again, in addition to the mix control, which I'm going to set to about 50%. We also have this reverb knob here, and it has four different modes that we can choose from. First, we have room, which is noted by the small R right here. So that's gonna be a shorter sound. Then we move up to hall. It's gonna be a longer reverb. Then we move up to church, which is gonna be even longer. And then from church, we have plate. And plate's gonna be a really bright sounding, kind of, kind of a more harsh reverb, actually. That's the reverb side. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mix all the way down so we're not getting any, any reverb. We're just getting clean sound right now because we have the delay controls all the way down as well. Delay controls include blend, repeat, and time. Pretty much similar to the Echo Rain. We, our blend control is the wet dry mix. So if we, you know, if we turn it down, we're not gonna get any delay. As we turn it up, we increase the amount of delay blended in. And here's at 100%. So you can hear that it's a pretty loud delay. It's not overtaking our dry signal, but it's, it's pretty unity volume with the dry signal. The repeat controls the amount of repeats. It's our feedback control. Again, at minimum, we only get one repeat. And as we turn it up, we get more repeats. In the sonic ambience, it's a little bit different than in the Echo Rain because even at those higher repeat times, I'm gonna turn it all the way up, we're not self-oscillating. So again, even with the repeat on full, the sonic ambience will not self-oscillate. And then the next delay control is our time control. Again, this is how slow or fast the repeats are. And this one goes all the way up to 2000 milliseconds.
It also goes really quick. So you can get both ends of the spectrum. Again, the Echo Rain only went up to 500 milliseconds on the delay. The Sonic Ambience goes up to 2000. The last delay control we're gonna go over is the mode control, and that gives us the option of choosing one of four different delay modes. We have analog, digital, tape, and reverse. The analog mode is going to be similar to the Echo Rain. It's gonna be a little bit darker sounding and it's gonna be more voice like an analog delay. <laughs> The digital delay mode on the Sonic Ambience is a really bright and lively sound. The tape mode is meant to emulate the old tape delays, so we're going to get a little bit of saturation on the repeats. It's not gonna be as bright, it's not gonna be as full sounding, and we're also going to get a little bit of modulation introduced. And then the last mode is reverse, and it takes our delayed signal and plays it back in reverse. Magic, of course, happens when you blend those two delay and reverb modes together. We've got the blend on the church setting at about 40%. We've got the blend of the delay on 50%. Repeats kind of higher. Time on the delay is higher. enjoyed taking a look at this group of pedals from Sonic Cake. If you want to learn more about these pedals, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you did like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Check out all the other gear demos and instructional videos I have here. And if you want to keep up with me on a daily basis and interact with me a little bit more, you can always head on over to Instagram. My handle is at Eric Marrow over there. And if you want to hear even more from these pedals and other pedals, you can also feel free to check out the Pedal Demo Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts 
podcasts. And before I get out of here, I wanna send a huge thank you to these folks right over here who are my executive producers for my Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you, it means the world to me. If you'd like to help support the channel, of course there are links in the description below. So thank you so much for the support. Thank you for watching. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and I will talk to you in the next video. Thank you.